So this is for an example of a graph. So a graph consists of two things, namely V and E. V is a set of nodes called vertices. So in this graph, those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So they're the circles in this structure. And it consists of E, where E is a collection of pairs of vertices. And we call them edges. So the edges are the lines that connect those vertices. So if you look, them, uh, look for them in a text form, then you can see V is just a set of all these numbers, because all those numbers were the vertices. And E is a collection of pairs of vertices. So this collection consists of everything, um, of those things between the brackets. So this thing between brackets is an edge. And this is the edge that goes from vertex 1 to vertex 2. So this edge is this edge. And this 1, 2, 3 is the edge between vertex 2 and 3. Okay, so where do we use graphs? Graphs are actually uh, often used in practice in uh, basically things where it makes sense to store the data as a graph. So um, an example of that is, for example, uh, with a lot of maps, we use graphs because we can uh, store the vertices, as, we can store the places as vertices and the uh, path between those places as edges. So for example, in this graph, the vertices represent airports and we can label them with city names and the edges represent the uh, distances between each of the airports. And of course, we can have a distance between some airports and uh, between some airports we might not uh, be able to travel. So, in graphs, we make the distinction between undirected and directed graphs. So an undirected graph is a graph where all edges are undirected. So all edges are unordered pairs. And we saw that in the last graph where we had this, uh, where we had the cities and the distances between them. Of course, if we have two cities, ORT and DVD, and we have a distance between them, it of course doesn't matter uh, which one is first, right? We can we can call the edge ORT PVD or PVD ORT. It doesn't matter because the distance um, is the same whether you go from one to the other or the other to one. Then we have directed graphs, and those are graphs where all edges are ordered pairs. So all the edges are directed. So for example, when an edge represents a flight, in this case, flight AA1206. Um, this flight goes from one vertex to another vertex. And here it does matter from where it goes and to where it goes. The order does matter. So it's an ordered pair. So this is a directed edge. And if all edges are directed, the graph is directed. And then finally, we have mixed graphs, where uh, which contain both directed and indirected edges. Okay, so let's see the basic terminology. So end vertices are um, the two vertices which are joined by an edge. So for example, the edge A in this case has two end vertices, namely U and V. And edge F has two end vertices, vertices W and Y. And if this edge would be directed, then we call uh, where it comes from the origin and where it goes to the destination. We call two vertices adjacent if an edge connects them. So U and V are adjacent, W and Y are also adjacent, but U and X is not adjacent because there is no edge between them. Edges incident on vertex V are the edges that have V as one of the endpoints. Um, so uh, the edges incident on V are A, D, and B. 
And if you're talking about a directed graph, then we call the edges incoming or outgoing edges, depending on if they have V as a start or endpoint, as origin or destination. Parallel edges are edges that have the same end vertices. So H and I have both end vertices X and Z. So H and I are parallel edges. A self loop is an edge which has the same, uh, which has where the end vertices coincide. So it has only uh, Z as both of the end vertices. So J is a self loop. And then finally, the degree of a vertex is the number of edges um, with this incident on that vertex. So V has A, D, D as incident edges. So it has a degree of three. And if you're talking about a directed graph, we consider an in degree and an out degree, where the in degree is the degree uh, is the, the amount of vertices um, from incoming edges and the out degree from outgoing edges. Okay, so we've now seen graphs, but in this course, we're actually mainly talking about simple graphs. So when we talk about a graph, you can assume it's simple um, unless we state otherwise. So simple graphs are graphs without parallel edges and self loops. And we use simple graphs because uh, a lot of applications, um, in a lot of applications, parallel edges and self loops don't make sense. Uh, for example, there cannot be two different distances between two cities uh, because there's just one distance between two cities. And there's also not a distance between a city and itself. So we can define simple graphs a bit differently. So the vertices can be defined in the same way, but the edges can now be a set of pairs of vertices because um, we know that all edges are unique. There cannot be um, two edges that have the same end vertices because it's a simple graph. So because we know there's no duplicates, we can also store it as a set instead of as a collection. Okay, paths are sequences of alternating vertices and edges. So for example, the red line here is a path because it alternates between uh, a vertice, an edge, a vertice, an edge. And of course, those have to be adjacent each time. So. The red is a path, and the green is also a path. A simple path is a path where all vertices are distinct. So the red path is not simple because W, but it goes through W twice, and the green path is simple because it has no uh, node where it goes through twice. Anyway, for directed path in directed graphs, um, all the edges where it goes through, it traverses in the direction of that edge. Then we have cycles, and cycles are paths where the start vertex and end vertex is the same. So here we see a path with start vertex and end vertex u, so this path is a cycle. And similar to path, we say a cycle is simple if there's no, um, if it doesn't go to the same vertex twice. So the red cycle is not simple, and the green cycle here is simple. And then we can call a directed cycle similar to a directed path, where it traverses um, the edges along the direction of the edge. Then we have the notion of subgraphs. So a subgraph S of a graph G is another graph where the vertices are a subset of the vertices of the original graph, and the edges are also a subset of the edges of the original graph. 
So this red graph is a subgraph of this full graph because vwx is a subset of uvwxz and those three edges are a subset of all the edges here. And then something is a spanning subgraph if it's a subgraph with all vertices of the uh, entire graph. So a spanning subgraph is a graph where the vertices are the same and the edges are a subset of all the edges of the original graph. The final bit of terminology is about connectivity. So we say a vertex U reaches a vertex V if there exists a path from U to V. And in directed graphs, this path has to be directed. So U reaches V because there's a path here. U also reaches X because we can make a path here. And U also reaches Z because of course we can make a path here as well. But in this graph, U reaches V, but not X because there's no path from U to X. We say a graph is connected if every pair of vertices, um, if every vertice reach, uh, reaches every other vertex. So we see here that all five of the vertices reaches all of the other four vertices. So this is connected. And then we say a graph is strongly connected if um, or we say a directed graph is strongly connected if uh, there is a directed path from each vertex to each other vertex. And then we call the different components of a graph the connected components. So the maximal connected subgraphs of the graph. So here we see uh, u, v, and w are one of the connected components because in those vertices, uh, they can all connect to each other. There's also, there is always a path between each other. And XZ is the other connected component because they have also a path to each other. 